Hey everybody, Miss Dietrich here. We're looking at lesson 8.6, which is on solve multiplication and division equations. So one of the things that they remind you is that you can use properties of equality and inverse operations to solve multiplication and division equations. So what are the properties of equality? Because we've already learned about addition property of equality and the subtraction property of equality, but for these types of equations, we'll use these two. So let's read what it is. The division property of equality states that if you divide both sides of an equation by the same non-zero number, the two sides will remain equal. The example that they give you is we have 2 times 6 as the left side of the equation and 12 as the right side of the equation. Well, what's the number that they're choosing to multiply on both sides of the equation in this case? Or actually divide, rather, they're dividing both sides by 2. So if we divide the, this side by 2, we end up getting 6. And if we divide this side by 2, we end up getting six. So they were equal before, and the equation is equal after. The same thing applies for multiplication. What does the multiplication property of equality say? It says, if you multiply both sides of an equation by the same number, the two sides will remain equal. So the example they give us here is 12 divided by four for the left side of the equation, and for the right side of the equation, we get three. Now we already know that 12 divided by four equals three, and that three equals three. But what if we throw in a number that we're going to multiply on both sides of the equation? In this case, what if we throw on a multiply by 4? So if we multiply both sides by 4, the two sides of the equation remain equal. Now, there's an app that I use that I really think, let me find it. It's called Pan Balance Numbers, and I really think that this helps people to understand this concept a lot more than looking at a bunch of words. So what I did here is I came up with two equations that both happen to equal 18. So on the red pan, I have 3 times 6 equaling 18. And in the blue pan, I have 2 times 9 equaling 18. So if we use our properties that we just talked about, why don't we start with the multiplication property? So again, what is that? It's the idea that if you multiply both sides of the equation by the same number, the two sides will remain equal. In other words, it'll stay balanced. So if I throw on the red pan, if I multiply, how about by 5 on that side? As long as I do it to the blue pan, same number, right, by 5, then the two sides equal each other. Now, what if I throw in, in the red pan, I multiply by 4? That means I just got in the blue pan. I also have to multiply that by 4 to keep the thing balanced. All right, now what if we, we were just looking at the multiplication proper, property of equality, what if we now apply the division property of equality, and we'll test it out using this app. So if I take this red pan, and let's say I divide by about 2 on that side, then that means I have to divide this by 2 also to get that to balance out and see how the two sides equal each other. Now I can, I can go to the red pan again and divide by how about 2 again. And I can take this and divide it by 2 again, and it balances out. I can go to the red pan, and I can divide by 3. So if I do divide by 3 in the red pan, if I want it to balance out, I have to divide by 3 in the blue pan, and it balances out. So if you take a look at the equations that were generated by what I did in the, in the balance here, you can see that as long as you do something on the right side of the equation, if you do the same thing on the left side of the equation, in other words, you do the same thing on both sides of the equation, then the equation will remain balanced. Now this does apply, we've been talking about in the context of multiplication and division, but it does also apply for addition and subtraction. So if I reset this balance and reset the table here, and we kind of put in a number here, 18, and then I put in 18 over here, so now the two sides are equal. Now same thing, if I decide that I'm gonna subtract a value, like subtract 5 from this side. To keep it balanced, I have to subtract 5 from this side as well. And if I want to use the, the uh, property but only using for addition, if I, in the red pan, if I add a number, like let's say I add 8, that means I have to add 8 to the blue pan to get it to balance out. So again, what is this property called? All these properties are called, they're called the property of equality and what operation you're doing will be the um, beginning of it. So we, for today, we just need to know about the division property of equality and the multiplication property of equality because we're dealing with multiplication division equations and we're just gonna be doing 
the opposite operation to solve, but this does apply for solving any type of equation. All right, so how does this, uh, how does this work? So if we take a look at an example like this, solve the equation 2 thirds n equals 1 fourth. What's the opposite of multiplying a variable by 2 thirds? Well, it would be to divide by 2 thirds. And when we think about what's the reciprocal of this, right? Dividing by 2 thirds, recall, is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of this is 3 halves. So that means we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 3 halves. And when we do that, we end up getting 3 eighths. Let's take a look at a couple of other examples. Let's look at this one. Real simple. Solve the equation 2 and 5 tenths times m equals 10. What's the opposite of multiplying a variable by 2 and 5 tenths? Well, it would be to divide by 2 and 5 tenths. So that's what they're showing here. You take the left side of the equation, divide it by 2 and 5 tenths, which means you're going to do the same thing on the other side of the equation. You're doing 10 divided by 2 and 5 tenths. And when we do 10 divided by 2 and 5 tenths, we're going to get 4. So we use the division property of equality to get the answer for that question. All right, so if we were going to do any of these questions, right, we would use whatever the opposite is and do it to both sides of the equation to keep it balanced. What's the opposite of multiply a variable by 3? It would be to divide it by 3. Since we're dividing by 3 on that side of the equation, we have to divide by 3 on this side of the equation. This will cancel out. And we get our answer. We can do 21 divided by 3 in our head and get the 7 and just tack on that 0. So we end up getting x equals 70. For number 3, here's the variable right here. What's happening to the variable? It's being multiplied by 4. What's the opposite of multiplying by 4? It's to divide by 4. To keep the equation balanced, we have to do that on both sides of the equation to solve. This will simplify and we'll get the answer of t over here. We have to do 2 and 8 tenths divided by 4, which would give us our answer of 7 tenths. Over here, what's the opposite of multiplying a variable by 1 third? It's to divide by 1 third. What's the reciprocal of that? Because remember, dividing by 1 third is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So if I flip that around, that's going to be the same thing as multiplying both sides by 3 over 1 or 3. So this will all cancel out here on this side. That all cancels out, and we bring down the n, and all we have left to do is to do 15 times 3, and we get 45. Now, you don't have to sit around and wonder, did you get it right? Because remember, they want you to also check. So let's just review how you do a check. To do a check, you take your answer, and you substitute it in the place of x. So this means 3 times whatever you got, which in this case was 70, equals 210. And if we do 3 times 70, we'll get we'll get 210. 210 equals 210. So that checks. Over here, if we take this number and substitute it in for t, then that means we're multiplying 4 times 7 tenths. And if we do 4 times 7 tenths, that does equal 2 and 8 tenths. So 2 and 8 tenths equals 2 and 8 tenths. That checks. All right, and same thing here. If we substitute in where the n is, the value of 45, and multiply it with the 1 third, because that's what that means, 1 third times 45 is supposed to give us this 15. So if we um, reduce, right, and reduce, right, that equals 15. So that checks, 15 equals 15. It's a check. All right, so uh, what did we learn from this? We learned that... We know that number properties, as long as whatever you do to one side of the equation, you do it to the other side of the equation, that it, it'll keep the equation balanced. And that's really important when we learn how to solve equations.